Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall here from The Healthy American. I have a question for you. How do you like living in a country where the governor can just make any law that he or she wants to make? Or better yet, how do you like living in a country where the media tells you that the governor is making laws, but that's not even the case? Today in California, we heard that our governor ordered the public to wear masks in the entire state. Now, there are a few things that are wrong with this, and I know that you are a critical thinker, which is why you are a part of the Healthy American, and I want to show you the myths, the deception, the deceit. So let's dive in, shall we? I'm going to share my screen, and I would like to hear from you what is going on in your state, because state after state, uh, it, each state is just falling faster than the other. So let's do a internet search and see what comes up. All right. Californians must wear face masks in public order issued by Newsom. Well, that is so interesting because Newsom has zero legal authority to issue any public order. That's right. And it's the same thing in your state. A governor has no power a governor has no power to issue any order that requires a member of the public to do anything. Before I dive back into all of the deception of the media and how it creates fear and panic, let me explain very briefly what the power of a governor is. First of all, the governor is one of three co-equal branches of government. Now, I kind of ran out of room, so it looks like He's a little bit higher, but he's not. Governor, legislature, I get, I get choked up, I can't even say the word. Governor, legislature, and the courts. These are the three co-equal branches of government in each state. The legislative branch is the branch that makes law. So a bill is introduced and there is debate. It goes to a committee, it might be revised. Generally, there are two chambers in your legislative body. We have an assembly and a Senate in California. And then the governor can sign the bill into law, but a governor does not make any law. A governor has no legal authority to make any law. The court is the judicial system. So that's where you can have criminal court or civil court, and the courts can also check the legislature to make sure that those laws are legal and that they are not conflicting with any established law. That's what we call a system of checks and balances. We do not live in a kingdom where there is a king who issues orders on a whim. All right, we don't have a government that's set up that way. So how do you like having a governor who acts like a king or queen issuing these public orders where they, whereby they have no authority to do so. A governor issuing a public order, and especially a public health order, would be like a school principal writing parking tickets in the parking lot. That school principal has no authority to write parking tickets. <laughs> it might be a good idea to write a parking ticket, it might make the parking situation better, but good ideas are not laws. In fact, a lot of bad ideas are laws, but just because something might sound good or it's something that you should do does not mean it's a law. So what does a governor do? Well, you might think that the governor can make law. You might think that the governor can compel the public, the individuals in the state to do something, but the governor has no legal authority to do that. A governor can sign and veto bills. That means sign them into law or veto them. What the governor does, he's an executive. He's in the executive branch like an administrator. So he can direct agencies and departments. So you know that there is the Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV. There is the Department of Public Health. We have a Department of Fish and Game, and every state has some agencies and departments that are similar. They might be different depending on your state. The governor spends the money and he sets the budget and he enacts the laws in that he tells these agencies and departments 
or he oversees the agencies and departments as they are implementing the laws. And the governor can issue an executive order or a, an executive order that relates to a state of emergency. I have a whole video about that, and so I would refer you to that video. An executive order never can compel an individual to do anything. Let me make that clear. A governor like Kate Brown in Oregon yesterday said that she orders the public to wear masks. Okay, that is just a perfect lawsuit waiting to happen because there is no legal authority behind that. When a government or an individual acts with power that has no legal authority, the definition of that is tyranny and the person doing it is a tyrant. That is the dictionary definition of a tyrant or tyranny, acting with power, exerting force and power with no legal authority. Now let's take a closer look because even though the internet search showed several newspaper articles, let's go back and look at that. So we already are clear that a governor has no legal authority to compel you to do anything. The governor can only compel the agencies and the departments to do things. He can direct an agency, or in this case, the Department of Health. He can speak to the director of the Department of Health and say, I want every citizen to wear a mask. But it's the director of the Department of Public Health who issues the orders. And you're saying, Peggy, why does that even matter? We have to wear a mask one way or the other. I'm going to show you exactly why that matters. So I'm going to share my screen and we are going to look again at this internet search that says, uh, order issued by Newsom. Uh, no. Uh, okay, masks are mandatory. Look at that word mandatory. Let's take that apart, shall we? Governor Gavin Newsom issues order requiring face coverings. That's the new word. And um, let's let's take a look. Let's. Uh, I clicked through one of these, and let's look at a, a very local paper. It's called The Patch. You may know of this. And I want to share with you a couple of things that are very distressing to me. All right, right off the bat, they're putting a picture of children's masks with unicorns. All right, let's talk about the symbolism of a unicorn later. It's very troubling to me that they are using children's masks to normalize suffocating your child. And if any person is on this thread and wants to leave a message in the comments on this video about why they would suffocate their child with a mask, I would really be curious to know what your thinking is about that because there's plenty of science that shows the oxygen levels drop. But let's set the science aside. We're talking about the law here. Let's look at the word, shall we? Face coverings now mandatory. Do you know what that word mandatory means? A requirement, right? Required. Look, look at this word, Californians must. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, must. Now, we can go through and read this a little bit more, but why don't we do this? And, and they say that, you know, Orange County, where I live, had been in the headlines recently, downgrading their requirement to a recommendation. Well, let's actually look at the language of the state of California, shall we? We had a great success in Orange County because we brought them to the mat on the principle of law and science. So let's do this. Let's actually look at the LA Times, the good old LA Times. And um, interesting that there is an owl. I mean, the symbolism is very uh, curious. And many of my um, fellow YouTubers have exposed the symbolism of an owl. So I will leave that to them to expose for you. But take note, think of the uh, WHO, the who, 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 there's a lot of owl symbolism, but why don't we click through and see what the LA Times says. Californians must wear face masks in public 
under coronavirus order issued by Newsom. Now, you can read as well as I can these words, and two things jump out at me. Must? Well, actually, this whole phrase, the order was issued by Newsom. And it goes on to say that uh, the governor ordered all Californians to wear face coverings. And you're saying, Peggy, just you're twisting the words. You're taking the words out of context, right? Isn't that what some of you are going to say? You're, you're, I know it's written in black and white, but you're still twisting the words. You're taking those words out of context. Why does it even matter? I'll tell you why it matters. Because they are conditioning you to believe that your governor can order you to do something. And there is no legal authority for any governor to order any individual of the public of that state to do anything. So shall, let's do this, shall we? Uh, lie, lie, oh, lie, uh, lie. This is a lie, this is a lie, and, and uh, this is a lie. So let's do this. Newsom's order, oh, Newsom's order. Okay, he ordered it, even though he doesn't have the authority to do so. Let's click through and see where that takes us, shall we? Oh, it actually takes us here. It takes us to the California Department of Health. It does not take us to the governor's website. This is the governor's website. And let's see if he issued an order telling you, the public, to wear, that you must wear a face covering. Let's take a look. Well, uh, no, that's not it. That's about, um, that's about you're going to vote by mail. Uh, Supreme Court ruling, no, that's not it, June 18th. Let's see. Oh, June 17th, June, gee, I'm in the newsroom. Here's where all the executive orders are. Where's his executive order, Los Angeles Times? Where's the executive order that Newsom issued? I, I would like to see that. Because when I click through on your link, it takes me to the California Department of Public Health. Why don't we look and see what the California Department of Health has to say about this? Oh, look at this word, guidance, huh? Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I know I'm an English teacher, but even the English teachers can make mistakes. So does guidance sound like the same word as requirement or must? Mm, not to me. Now, this is very communistic because of our collective actions. Because you saved my life by not breathing on me. And I saved your life by staying home. I didn't know I had so much power. Well, we still are at an increased risk for exposure and infection. Oh, you wouldn't want anybody to be exposed now because they might actually develop antibodies. I'm fully aware that the virus theory is just a theory, but let's play along a little bit, shall we? It says that this document ups uh, updates their guidance, which we will also look at for a moment. This is just getting better and better. And I also printed out these orders. And friends who live anywhere, you print out the orders from your state. And you can bring these orders with you. And you just bring them into the store, into your place of work, wherever you want to go. You don't even speak. You can just point to them and have the people read them outside, out loud. I did a whole video on don't talk to the mask. You want to wear a mask? Please be my guest. Don't, don't make me one. Here we go. Look at this word guidance. I've done many videos about the word guidance. Guidance is a recommendation. This is not even a public health order. If this were a public health order, there would be attributions to California law because that's what you have to do with a public order. You would say in the uh, power given to me under section 101080 of the California Health and Safety Code, I am issuing a public order. This is not a public order. It's guidance. It's actually fantastic news. We don't have to follow any of this. This actually is a recommendation. Although the Los Angeles Times is going to tell you differently because they want you to believe that down the line, 
your governor in any state has the power to tell you what to do. But you are smarter than that because you know that a governor can only oversee agencies and departments. So let's see what they're telling us. Now we're supposed to wear it outside, in line, all of this. I will have a link for you if you would like to read it. I think this one is really funny that um, if you are driving Uber, for example, if you are driving any public transportation, taxi, private car, um, you should wear it. And look at this, when no passengers are present, face coverings are strongly recommended. <laughs> I mean, I can't even make this up, you guys. They need better script writers. This is absolutely hilarious. So yes, they are recommending that if you're driving one of these taxis, you should, or Uber, you should wear a face mask when you're by yourself. I, I just can't even say anything more on that. Now, here's the beauty of it. Here are all of the exemptions. And there's many of them. I actually um, have them here. So lots of exemptions. And I would recommend you highlight this and you take it with you. So if you have a medical condition, you see, they heard us. They heard our complaints. They heard us when we said we are having trouble breathing. So the good news is if you're unconscious, unconscious, <laughs> and without a conscience, these people have no conscience. If you are unconscious, you don't need to wear a mask. And if you're incapacitated or, you, or if it's going to obstruct your breathing, well, guess what? A mask obstructs nearly everyone's breathing. They're actually making these recommendations weaker and weaker and weaker, not stronger, although the LA Times and an internet search would tell you differently. So if anybody wants to, it would be great if you would write to the LA Times and you would write to all those newspapers and just say, uh, excuse me, you are completely wrong. They're always wrong. So if you're hearing impaired, because that was a big concern, people could not hear, they couldn't see the lip reading. And if you're wearing a mask, you can take it off if you are communicating with the person who is hearing impaired. This is fantastic. I know we're like grappling for our freedom. I've never worn a mask and I don't intend to, unless it's my choice. But the point is they're hearing us and all of our efforts are working. And you should not wear it if it's going to create a risk for you. For example, you're not gonna wear a cloth face mask if you're a cook in a restaurant, that could catch on fire. That is an OSHA disaster waiting to happen. So any of you restaurant workers that are cooking over an open flame, you should have no mask on your face. Are you kidding me? These things are highly flammable, absolutely ridiculous. Now, it goes on and on. And of course, if you're going to go swimming, that's a good idea. You don't need to wear a mask if you're going to go swimming, <laughs> but it gets better. To me, the, my most favorite part of this guidance, because they're not even public orders, and the reason why they're not public orders is because we also called them on it. There is no emergency. You can only issue public health orders under an emergency. There's no emergency. So we're looking at the language. We are calling them on it. And guess what, friends? It is free and open. You do not, friends in Los Angeles, please stop wearing a mask. All right? Orange County, San Bernardino, San Diego, Ventura, Santa Barbara, Alameda. Would you guys just stop wearing a mask? You're going to print this out, take it with you, and tell them it's guidance and you don't have to. Here's the beauty. The only people who really are, uh, do not have to follow this, according to the California Department of Health, are prisoners. The prisoners do not have to wear a mask. Only free people. Prisoners, no mask, free people, obstruct your breathing. Wait a minute, aren't the prisoners in close approximation with each other who are not their family members? Yeah, this, like, if I'm missing the logic, I hope someone will point it out to me, and I'm sure someone will, because it's quite unusual that the prisoners don't have to wear a face mask, but the free people do. The people who didn't commit a crime are the ones that are going to be punished. <laughs> we knew this when they let all the prisoners out of jail uh, 
or all of the convicts out of the prisons and jail earlier. So anyhow, what I want to do is I want to go back here where it says the document here updates this guidance. So let's look at the guidance. This is fun too. I've already clicked through. This is their guidance. That's where the link takes you. I have all the links in the description. And this was April 20th. And again, this is guidance, my friends. Contrary to what the LA Times says, these are not laws, these are not mandates, it's the exact opposite. It could not be even, it's so weak, it's, it's unbelievably weak. It even says here that um, face coverings may increase risk. Huh, okay, hmm. You just told me to wear one because it would reduce the risk. And here you're telling me that they may increase risk if I don't do my physical distancing and hand washing. So which is it? Which, which works? Uh, just tell me. Should I stand six feet apart? Is that working? Does it work or not work? Because if it works, I don't need to wear a mask. And if it doesn't work, oh, why do I have to stand six feet apart? And what about washing hands? Like, does that work? If it works, why stand six feet apart? And why wear a mask if I'm already standing six feet apart? And why stand six feet apart if I'm already wearing a mask? Inquiring minds want to know. Let's look further, shall we? Individuals, uh, well, now it's statewide, but it says we should only wear coverings if we feel comfortable doing so. Did you catch that? If they feel comfortable doing so. Gee, LA Times, does that mean, is that the same word as a mandate? Is that the same word as must? Now, friends, I'm doing this because I want you to do this in your state. And I can show you how to do it in your state. And what you want to do is join me at thehealthyamerican.org, put in the the, healthyamerican.org. And when you sign up, I can give you more videos, training. I can put you together with like-minded people in your communities, in your state. And that's what we need to do, friends. This is absolutely ridiculous. We've got the LA Times lying to us. We've got Newsom lying to us. We've got the California Department of Health is the only one that actually is kind of, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you that's very, very important. One more thing here, because the California Department of Health also says, this to me is fantastic. How well do the face, cloth face coverings work? There is limited evidence. Okay, help me again. I know I teach English, but limited evidence is hardly convincing. It's hardly compelling to suggest that the use of cloth face coverings by the public during a pandemic could help reduce disease transmission. You know what? I couldn't, I couldn't do a better job of breaking apart this guidance if I had written it myself. Kudos to you, California Department of Health, for showing the contradictory, hypocritical information. Kudos to you. You made my job so unbelievably easy. And we are going to have this in the hands of freedom-loving Californians and I want you in your state to print out those health orders. I will start linking as many as I can at thehealthyamerican.org. The trick is, friends, you don't have an argument with anybody. You hold up the paper and you actually have them read it. Because I don't talk to anybody with a mask on. So you have them read it and it will clearly state that you are exempt. If you need uh, help doing that, remember, sign up so I can email you all of the tips because I don't know about you. Actually, I'm having a little bit too much fun here today. My day started out a little wrong when I heard through the grapevine that Newsom ordered the, and the mask mandate. He can't order it. It's not a mandate. In fact, it's so much less restrictive than it was before. I recommend that we continue to put pressure on the counties because the counties can become more restrictive. They can follow the orders of the state, and we've got them on that. It's, it's just a slam dunk that it is guidance. We no longer are under an emergency. Therefore, 
there is no legal authority to issue public health orders. Probably what will happen at the county level is that will just sort of sizzle away, fizzle away. They'll sort of stop issuing them. But the point is they're trying to condition us to believe that a governor has the power to compel an individual person to do a certain behavior. It's not true. There's no validity. There's no authority. And I'm actually glad that he didn't issue this order, as I heard through the LA Times and others, because we would be taking him to court, or, or, or worst, as I say. There are other remedies, other legal remedies that just kind of shortcut the court, uh, the going to court. And uh, if the time comes, we can talk more about that. So thank you, everybody. I want you to break apart those public uh, recommendations and guidance in your state now that you're looking through the lens of a governor can never compel you to do anything. And look for the words guidance, look for should, look for recommended. None of those words institute a law. These are not laws and laws do not need to be followed. And if you notice, there was nothing in here that said it was a misdemeanor or carry to fine. So you know what that means? Masks are off. See you soon, everybody.